Now let me start by painting a picture of an extraordinary political showdown. It's 2005 and Victorian Liberal backbencher Petro Giorgio, along with three other government dissidents, a toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Howard at the lodge in Canberra. It's late on a cold, rainy Monday night. The media are camped out the front gates. At stake is whether John Howard will face his first rebellion on the floor of the National Parliament. The issue is Australia's bipartisan, uh, <coughs> is Australia's bipartisan and pitiless system of mandatory detention of asylum seekers. Petro Giorgio is threatened to introduce a private member's bill unless John Howard is willing to negotiate away many of the system's most brutal components like imprisoning children behind razor wire in the desert and locking up others who have committed no crime and pose no security <coughs> risk for years. But it's gone on for two and a half hours this meeting. It's obvious to the dissidents that the Prime Minister is not interested in giving in to these four backbench rebels. And why should he? John Howard has just been re-elected with a tremendous majority covering both houses of parliament, a feat not seen in more than 20 years. He's at his political zenith. His hardline policies on border control had been a key electoral plank. The stream of boat people had all but stopped. So John Howard is visibly irritable and combative when the few concessions he does offer these rebels is rejected as not going far enough. So Petro Giorgio stands up. That's it, Petro says sharply, rising to leave. I'm introducing my bill tomorrow. Let's be clear about this, John Howard replies just as sharply. If you do this, Petro, you will embarrass your government, you will embarrass your party. The intensity and directness of what comes next surprises even Petro's three colleagues. I'll tell you what's embarrassing, John, says Petro. Three years ago, you agreed to let out a three-month-old baby who'd been born in detention. She's now three years old and she's smashing her head against a wall inside Villawood. That's embarrassing, John. We've got psychiatric patients I went to you about who should have been released for treatment, but instead that was blocked by the department and now a court has found that the government has breached its duty of care to these people. Now that's what I call embarrassing to the party. And we've got 140 people locked up for three years or more with no convictions and no evidence they pose a threat to anyone. Let me tell you, John, that's an embarrassment. I'm introducing the bill tomorrow. John Howard tries to defuse the confrontation. Petro, let's all back up here a bit. But the fuse is lit. John Howard has failed to break the rebellion. But can Petro Giorgio now break the system holding refugees and their children in indefinite detention? By now, this is 2005, thousands of Australians have joined refugee advocacy groups to oppose John Howard's hard line. For many, Petro's push put the nation's conscience on trial. But to that point, it had been a long, lonely and often traumatic journey for many of the activists because Australia had been locking up refugee families for more than 10 years.